Welcome to the video for 10.3. We're talking about a little bit of a tougher subject today, areas of regular polygons. So uh, make sure you take great notes. If you're watching this because you're absent, make sure that you ask questions uh, for your teacher. Okay. A few vocab things to get in first. All right, all the highlighted things are things you need to write down. Okay. Uh, regular polygons, all right, polygon means many sides. So we're talking about any shape with any amount of sides uh, three or greater. So we could be talking about a triangle or a square. We could be talking about a decagon or even larger. So uh, there is one way to get, there is a way to get the formula for any polygon with any amount of sides. And the way we do it is we have to think about the distance from the center to a side. That's going to be a word called an apothem. So we'll have to talk about that. All right. So we'll get a few things in here first. So the radius of a regular polygon, something good to talk about right away. The radius is something like you've used with uh, circles, all right? Radius goes from a vertex to the center, okay? That's unfortunately what we don't want to see, all right? Our formula is going to involve something called an apothem, okay? So apothem is going to be the one that we really want, all right? It's going to be better for our area formula, all right? And apothem is here in red. The endpoints are still, the, it's still the center, but instead of a vertex, it's the midpoint of a side, okay? So it's the perpendicular distance from the center to a side of the polygon, okay? So that's going to be the, the good one, the big one for what we want to see uh, as far as uh, when we get into our area formula, okay? A few other things right away. Uh, the central angle of a regular polygon, all right? We're going to need to be able to figure out how many degrees an angle is in the center. We've sort of talked about it before a little bit last chapter with our rotational symmetry. Um, but this is what we get when the vertex is on the center and the sides are two consecutive radii. That just means the angle looks like this, all right? Two consecutive radii. So each side is a radius and the vertex is the center, okay? The way that we get that, the way that we figure out that central angle, all right, divide 360 by the number of sides. So to get that central angle, we take 360 divided by n, okay? Uh, kind of off to the side here, something that uh, we can look at um, is how we have our triangle set up here. So the area of an equilateral triangle, okay? The area of an equilateral triangle is one-fourth, this is the formula here, one-fourth times the side squared times the square root of three. And the reason the square root of three is in there uh, has to do with 30, 60, 90 triangles, all right? But that's, if you get an equilateral triangle, it has to do with everything we're talking about. Well, that's something to talk about uh, another day, all right? So uh, that would be a formula for an equilateral triangle if you get it. Okay, it can make things a little bit easier. All right, so moving on from some of the vocab. All right, one skill that we're going to need is to be able to figure out angle measures. All right, we need that because eventually we're going to get into some more difficult things with trig here as we go. Uh, but first off, the figure at the right is a regular pentagon. That means n is 5 with radii and an apothem drawn. What is the measure of each number? angle. All right, so they want a few different things. They want the measure of angle one, the measure of angle two, and they want the measure of angle three. So that's what we can find. We're we actually are going to go in that order this time, just the way that it works out. Um, again, angle one is a central angle. All right, the, uh, the sides of the angle are, radi are both a radius. They're consecutive radii. So to find angle one, it's 360 degrees. If I were to go all the way around right here, that's 360, divided by how many sides there are, how many angles there are like that. Uh, so I didn't want to put n there. I wanted to put 5. I know that n is 5. I have a pentagon this time. So 360 divided by 5 is 72 degrees. So that would be our measure of angle 1. So I know that that's a 72. Okay. One thing about the apothem, so I know that each one of these angles is 72 now. So this apothem is going to be a midpoint at the side, it's also going to bisect this angle up top. So I know that the entire angle should be 72, meaning that this piece of it has to be half of that. It's 72 divided by 2. It's the angle made by the apothem there. So 36 degrees would be that apothem 
uh, induced angle. Okay, then we want angle three. Now we're just talking about triangles. All right, I have a triangle here that has 180 degrees in it. So angle three is the only one that I don't know. I know that I have a 90 uh, and a 36 and some other angle. So angle three plus 36 plus 90 all equals 180. All right, when you solve all that, we're taking 180 minus 90 minus 36. Angle three is going to have to be a 54 degree angle. Okay, so that's a skill that you're going to need to be able to do. It's going to help us find things that are missing. Kind of the same theme that this chapter has had. These formulas that I'll show you, they can be pretty easy if we give you everything you need. As soon as we start taking stuff away, it gets a little bit tougher. Okay, so let's look at that formula. Like I said, the apothem is going to be important. All right, and I actually don't love the formula they give you in the book or in your note packet here. So we're going to modify it a little bit. All right, so the area of a regular polygon is half the product of the apothem, we need that, and the perimeter. And that's where I disagree a little bit. Uh, we're going to look at that in just a second. So here's what the formula is going to do. All right, they're, they're saying, um, so the perimeter is however long the side is times however many sides there are. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, the perimeter is the side length that that was just S times how many sides there are, right? So here's, here's what I think that uh, would be a little bit more beneficial for us to look at. If I'm looking at this triangle right here, I have an apothem and I have a base, which is my side length. So that would be side length and this would be my apothem, right? So if I can figure out the area of that triangle, there are one, two, three, four, five, six triangles the same exact size in that uh, polygon. This time, it's in this picture, it's a hexagon. So here's what I do. I just think about it that way. Can we find the area of one of the triangles? If we can do that, then we can multiply it by how many triangles there are of that size. So here's the formula I'm going to stick with. One half the apothem times the side length, times the number of sides. Okay, they're, they're exactly the same formula. I just like mine a little bit better because it emphasizes what we're talking about. How many triangles are there, all right? So this piece gives you the area of one triangle, okay? This piece gives you number of triangles, okay? So we'll break it up that way. Can you find the area of one triangle, which you're pretty good at because you all made it through 10 one, and then multiply it by how many there are, okay? So I'm gonna look at that formula. So regular decagon is this one here, all right? This is a nice example where they gave us what we need. So the formula here is one half ASF, right? So uh, I do know what the apothem is. I like to make a little list here. The apothem, is given here as 12.3. That goes from the center directly down 90 degrees to a side. So the apothem is 12.3. The side length they did give us is 8. All right. The number of sides or the number of triangles this time, deca means 10. So there are 10 sides. Okay. So in this scenario, I have everything that I need to plug in and get my answer. So the area of one of the triangles would be 1 half times the apothem, which is 12.3, times the side length, which is 8. So if I'm finding the area of this triangle here, okay, 1 half the base of 8 and the height of 12.3, okay? Then I'm going to take an, and say there's 10 triangles that are exactly that same size, so I'm just going to multiply by 10 at the end. So you can get your calculator out for that part. Uh, when you go and find that, you have about, uh, you get 80 here, so... Uh, you should get about 492 square inches, okay? That's if you have everything, all right? They give you everything. That's really nice of them. You don't have to worry about anything else, okay? Again, the tricky stuff comes this chapter from when you don't have everything that you need, all right? We have to go and find stuff. That's what makes these problems more difficult. All right, so let's take a look at something where they didn't give you quite everything you need. Uh, Oops, forgot about this one. So uh, with this one here, um, we can get this one here with everything that's given. Oh, I think I just skipped one. That's what it is. Okay. So here's one where they didn't give us everything we need. Here we go. So the area of the regular hexagon at the right here, they gave us this 18. 
All right, so let's make a list. Okay, I know I'm going to use this formula, one half a s n. Okay, um, I know uh, that I have 18, but that is actually not the apothem this time. We'll talk about that in a second. They did not give us a side length. The number of sides is six, so I actually don't know A and I don't know S. Okay, the reason I don't know A this time, 18, look at the endpoints. That's a vertex and a center. That's a radius, all right? I have a radius right there, not a an apothem, okay? So I have to figure out a couple things before I can find uh, what I need here. So that's where the angle stuff comes into play, all right? If this is 18, then this is 18. Okay, uh, I need to figure out a side length. I need to figure out how long the apothem is, which is this one right here. Okay, and that's what I need to work with before we uh, get much further. So I'm going to draw that a little bit bigger just so that we have the space so that you can see it. Here's what I know. This is 18. All right, I need to figure out A, and I need to figure out S. I need to figure those things out before I can answer my question, right? So let's see what we got. All right, with its, with a regular hexagon, let me look over here for a second, okay? I need to figure out how many degrees that angle is, okay? So this angle is 360 divided by how many sides there are, which is six. So this is a 60 degree angle right there, all right? So what did we say before is if, the, if each angle is 60 up top, that means that I really have a 30 here. All right, which means in this triangle right here, I have 30, 60, 90, so I have some shortcuts that I can use, okay? So that's how I'm gonna figure out a couple of these things, all right? Uh, so that makes 18 the hypotenuse of a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I have a short leg here and I have a long leg here, okay? So to get from the hypotenuse to the short leg, we said that the hypotenuse is twice as long as the short leg. So I know that that piece of the side is 9, which makes this piece 9. So the side length is 18 this time. That's something that's going to maybe happen more often with hexagons. All right, The radius and the side length would be the same thing. All right, To get from this side length to A, I still need the apothem before I can get any further. All right, to get from the short leg to the long leg, it was multiplied by square root of 3. So for this one, A is 9 square root of 3 yards. So now I have everything I need. It's going to be messy, but these are calculator problems anyway, so it's not going to be that big of a deal uh, in the grand scheme of things. Now I have what I need. Now I can plug things in. All right, the area of this, the area of one triangle would be one half the base of 18 times nine squared three. All right, but in our formula, we're gonna go A, S, and then N, the number of sides. There's six triangles that are exactly that same size. So that's calculator work. Um, the exact answer would be 486 square root of three. If I take the one half and the nine and the 18 and the six and multiply all those together, that's 486. All right, but we're going to get a decimal approximation that's about 841.78 square yards. Okay, so you have an exact answer and then you have your rounded answer. They didn't tell us how to round this time, so I just threw that in there. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All right, and see, hopefully they gave us everything we need. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So anytime it's a regular polygon with one half ASN, Okay, this time did they give us the apothem? Yes, they told us that 8 is A. Did they give us the side length? Yes. Did they give us how many sides there are? Yes, because they said it was a pentagon, which means that N is 5. So in this problem, we're, we're, we're actually okay. We can go right to the calculator. The area of this uh, regular pentagon, pentagon is 1 half, the apothem of 8, the side length of 11.6, and there are five sides. Okay, so if you plug all that in, you should get 232, uh, well, this time we're in square centimeters. Okay, so again, that one wasn't as bad simply because we had everything we needed. All right, so uh, we'll move on to the next one here. All right, feel free to re-watch any of these examples. That might be something that you need to do, and it's better just to ask questions in person too when you don't understand.
All right, so moving on. Uh, when you get square problems, all right, you can do it the same way with the ASN stuff. All right, but if I know it's a square, I'm going to be a little bit more strategic with what I do. All right, so they gave us that five is the apothem here. Okay, which I would I wouldn't know the side length if I did it with ASN. All right, I would know that A is five. I wouldn't know a side length. I'd have to figure that out, and I know that there's four sides, so I'd be missing something. Okay, which most of the time when that happens, you just have to figure it out. You have to deal with it. But with squares, if I was if I know that this distance is five, I know that this distance is also five. So I know that this this uh, height from top to bottom is going to be 10, actually. Okay, And that's the height from top to bottom, which means it's this side length. And it's a square, so that means that every side length is 10. So if they give you the apothem of a square, it's not wise to do ASN on that one. I know that the area of this one is just base times height, all right? So or side length squared. So I just have 10 times 10 for this one. I would just... I would find it the smarter way, not the harder way, okay? That one's just base times height, 10 times 10, okay? Similar over here, this one's maybe a little bit more of a memory trick. If this distance is 10, remember that's a radius, so I don't have A, S, I do know that N is 4, but I don't know either of these two, so that would take me some time to figure it out, all right? Which, if, if it's another shape, that's just the reality of it. But we can do this one a little bit smarter as well. If this is 10, then this diagonal is 20, okay? And that means this diagonal is 20, okay? So I'm going to think about this one as a rhombus because any square is a rhombus. A rhombus just needs four congruent sides. So the area of a rhombus We've talked about four, just the diagonal one times diagonal two, okay? So that's all we need to do for that one, just diagonal one times diagonal two. So I know that one of the diagonals is uh, 10 plus 10, which is 20. The other diagonal is 10, 10 plus 10, which is 20. So for this, we have uh, 20 times 20, or 400. Looks like they didn't give me any units this time, so I'm just going to say square units. Okay. So again, if it's a square, there's probably a better way to do it than ASM. They're, if they give you an apothem or if they give you a diag, they give you a side length, you just use that side length squared anyways. So uh, find the best way to do these, okay? Uh, back into just the regular polygon types. All right, a lot of this one is set up for us already. This one's looking at a honeycomb. A lot of times you have to remember your 30, 60, 90, or your 45, 45, 90, okay, in some way, shape, or form. So a honeycomb is made up of a regular hexagonal cell, okay? The length of a side of a cell is three, so they gave us the side length. So again, to find the area for regular polygons, one half ASN. A, they uh, haven't told us yet. S, they told us is three. N, they told us, is 6. We have a hexagon, okay? So in order to fit, find the answer to this problem, I need A. I need the apothem. So I need to know this distance right here, okay? So what we have here, this 60, right, that came from 360 divided by how many sides there were to figure out that angle, which means that uh, this piece is 30, like shown right here. Okay, the apothem will cut that angle, that top angle in half. So here's what we know as well. If this is a three for our side length, all right, I know that half of that side is 1.5, three divided by two, okay? So to get from here to here, again, that's our short leg, and we're going to the long leg, we multiply by square root of three. So A is kind of messy on this one, but it's that 1.5 with a square root of three tacked onto it. Okay, now we have everything that we need. We can go to the calculator, one half, the apothem we just figured out is 1.5 square root of 3, S was 3, N was 6. All right, punching all that in your calculator, we're going to get nearest tenth, 23.4 square millimeters in that honeycomb uh, hexagon. Okay, 
Let's do one more hexagon type, and then I'll show you some triangle stuff. The sides of a regular hexagon are 16 feet. All right, so again, we start our list here. All right, we know that A uh, is, well, we don't know A, but they told us S is 16. We know that N is 6. Okay, so that's what they started us with. The area of the hexagon is what they want. We need A to figure out that answer. So again, we break this up into triangles. All right, so find that center. I need to figure out, I know that the side length is 16. I need to figure out this distance here, which is A. And then once I know A, I can plug in and find my answer, okay? Again, it's a hexagon, so it's gonna be the same, but this is 360 divided by six, which gives us 60, which means the apricot is cutting that 60 in half into a 30, okay? Uh, also, the 16 is getting cut in half right here to be an eight. All right, so I have the short leg then, and I need to get the long leg. I'm gonna multiply by the square root of three. So A is eight times square root of three, and I'm ready for the calculator, okay? So A, we're running to the nearest foot. So 1 half times A, which is 8 square root of 3, times 16, and then there are 6 triangles that exact same size. All right, punching that in, I get uh, 665.1, which is going to round back down to 665. We are in square feet here. All right, so hexagons, it's going to be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So you have to remember that short. Right. Last thing that we'll talk about here, uh, some, some regular triangles, all right, and then we'll do one more hexagon one uh, right here at the end. So if you know the side length of, a, of an equilateral triangle, remember that we could use a formula to figure that out, okay? It was that one four side square root square root three thing, okay? The reason the square root of three was in that formula is because these are also going to involve uh, special right triangles. So here's what we got. If we start with this one, it might actually be a little bit tougher than the second one. They gave us two. That's an R this time because the endpoint is a vertex. Okay. So if I'm making this triangle here, I I want to figure out the area of it. All right. I don't know A yet. I don't know S yet. I do know that N is three. Okay. So I gotta find this apothem right there, okay? So that'll be one thing I have to worry about, to find that. I also have to find the side length. I have to figure out how long this entire side is, okay? So let's first start with what the angle is, all right? This angle is 360 divided by how many sides there are, which is three. So we have 120 degrees for that angle there, which means when we get the apothem, we cut that 120 in half, that's a 60. So I still have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. What's different is uh, where the short leg and the long leg ended up, okay? So what we know, all right, especially for this triangle here, uh, we know that this is a two meter side length, okay? That's actually my hypotenuse. So if I wanna get to the short leg here, the short leg is going to be the apothem this time. I need to divide that by two. Right? To get from the hypotenuse to the shorter leg, we have two as our factor there. So the apothem is two divided by two, which is one. Okay? So I know that that side is one. To get from there to the long leg, I need to multiply by square root of three. So one times square root of three, which is just square root of three. Okay? Okay, so then that's not the side length, that's just piece of, a piece of the side length, all right? So if I square to three for that piece, all right, then this piece is also square root of three. So if I add those together, I have two square root of threes. So that's gonna be my side length. Okay, now we're ready for the calculator. We have one half, the apothem, which is one, the side length, which is two square root of three, and the side length, the number of sides, which is three. This time we're going to get three square root of three for an exact answer, which rounds to about 5.2 square meters this time. Okay. So with that triangle, we had to use the special right triangles 30, 60, 90. 
All right, uh, this one over here we know a little bit more to begin with, so that's going to help us. Okay, we have, we have A, which is 7, that's given. Okay, we still need to figure out the side length, we know that there are three sides. Okay, once we have those things, we're ready for the calculator. All right, so same idea. I know that that's 7, that's my short leg because it's going to be the same situation. Uh, one angle here is going to be 120, which makes this a 60, okay? Which makes this my short leg. To get from short leg to long leg, I'm going to multiply by square root of 3. So this is 7 square root of 3 on the bottom, which means this is 7 square root of 3, which means that an entire side length is 14 square root of 3, okay? So a lot of square root of 3 and uh, 2, trying to figure out if I should divide or multiply. So for this one, same thing, 1 half. F of 7, side length of 14, square root of 3, number of sides, 3. Okay, punting all that into the nearest tenth, 254.6. They didn't give us units, so I'm just going to go with unit squared. Okay, last one. Uh, I would recommend you try to pause it at this point, all right, and see if you can figure out the answer here, all right. We're using the same formula. Uh, a was given to you, but you need to figure out S. We know that N is 6. So if you can figure out S, you can go to your 1 half ASN. So I would take a second and pause here. See if you're doing this or you're on the right track uh, to do this correctly. And then we will uh, we'll wrap up with the answer to this one. So go ahead and pause right now. All right, so if you uh, gave that a shot, see how you did. All right, we know that the apothem is 4 square root of 3. We're back to hexagons now, which means that each angle is 360 divided by 6, or 60. So I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle right in here. Okay, so if my apothem of that is 4 square root of 3, I would take that and divide by square root of 3 to get my side length. So 4 square root of 3 divided by square root of 3 is 4 which makes this piece 4, so the side length you should have used is 8, total of 8. All right, so that's what we would have plugged in. So if you got that right, you're probably right for the rest of it. 1 half, 4 square root of 3, 8, and 6. Okay, if you plugged that in, you should have got about 166.3, again, square units. Okay. These can be really tricky, so like we had talked about, if they give you everything you need, it's not so bad. If they start taking stuff away, it's gonna be special right triangles for now. When we talk about it again later, it'll be more trig related, okay? So I, I rewatch anything that didn't make sense and then come with questions when you get back to class. Good job.